Where am I not setting boundaries? Where am I not saying no? Where am I avoiding tension? These are great questions to ask yourself. Where am I too giving? Giving to a fault. Like, I really didn't want to do that, but I did it. Do I ever stay on the phone too long and sit and listen to somebody ramble when I just really want to get off? You know? Do I ever go on dates that I really don't want to go on just because I don't know how to say no or I don't end the date early and I spend way too long with the person? Do I spend too much money on somebody even when I know I'm not attracted to them? Uh, if a friend asks me to go help him with something and I really don't want to do it, do I just say yes because I have to, not because I want to, not because I'm choosing to say, you know what, I really want to help this person. Do you let women walk all over? Do you have women friends that when they call you, you jump and run? Do you have women friends you need to end the relationship with because all they do is take advantage of you because you have this codependent nice guy relationship and you just haven't ended it? Now, some of this stuff you may find, you, you know, you have to adjust. You start to set a boundary and you realize, I don't want, I don't need to set a full boundary. I can do a partial boundary here. I don't need to kick these people out of my life because sometimes people go to the other extreme. They become real big dicks to compensate for being the nice guy. And that's not right either. Now, the first time you do that, you may be that bold or you may not be. It doesn't matter. The idea is I'm willing and okay with losing girls to build my confidence and self-esteem. Matter of fact, I want to let some girls go and say goodbye to them because it feels good. It says, wow, I don't need her to validate me to feel good about myself. And then you become that much more attractive for the next girl. So as you break the nice guy and you start developing the sense of radical honesty, you become more powerful, more powerful as a man, more powerful as a leader and sexier to women. Now, Breaking the nice guy is really an embodiment issue. We talk about this in every video. You got to learn to feel your heart. You got to learn to feel your stomach. You got to learn to feel your whole body when you do it. We talk a lot about that. No isn't up here. No, because women will challenge that. It's here. No, we're not doing it. I'm not doing it. It's grounding. It's no. Nope. In today's video, I want to talk about the nice guy syndrome. Let's have a discussion about the nice guy syndrome. Let's go a little deeper. Uh, the nice guy is probably the number one client we run into and one of the biggest reasons men don't succeed with women. Men don't succeed with women or don't do well with women because a lot of times they are so damn nice, they're nice to a fault. I know sounding nice sounds great. Like, let me take you to a nice dinner. Let me be nice to you. <laughs> But the problem with the nice guy is there's a little bit of an illusion going on. You see, the nice guy isn't really nice. He thinks he's nice. He acts nice. I, used, I was a nice guy. I'm a, I'm a recovering nice guy for, in a lot of ways, but I wasn't really nice. I was kind of actually a manipulative dick. And the reason that is is because I was being nice to get. Who do you need me to be? to make you like me? Who do you need me to be to get you to like me? So I would always get rid of all the tension in any conversation and then try to adjust myself like a chameleon to who she wanted me to be to make her like me. What, what restaurant did she want to go to? What if I make the wrong mistake? I better ask her first. Like, what kind of food do you like? And there was this sense of, of just tell me who to be, like hovering over her. Yeah, I, you know, and I, she might say I like Chinese food. I'd be like, I love Chinese food. Let's go get Chinese food. When really I don't like Chinese food. Or I might buy her a drink because I want to impress her. But then afterwards, I'm a little bitter because she doesn't go out on a date with me again. For example, I take her out to dinner and drinks and then the next day she doesn't call me and I'm like, that bitch, she used me. She took all my money. And I don't know if any of you have ever felt that before, ever felt like that. But that's really what the nice guy is. He's, he's this giant manipulation. And he's constantly pretending to be somebody he's not. And he's nice to a fault to get what he wants. Now, what, what is rooted in this? Well, first off, let's, let's take a little deeper look at, do you think you're a nice guy? Uh, do you have trouble saying no to people? Do you set boundaries with women? Do you have trouble creating tension with women? This is a really good one. Do you step in there and, and that's what the boundaries are and the, and the, and the tension is, is, the boundaries a form of tension. Can you look at her and say no? Can you look at her and say, you know what, I'm busy Saturday. We can go out Sunday. Or you know what, I'd much rather go to this restaurant tonight. You don't have to do this every time and you don't have to do this to show dominance. But there are times when you really don't want to go someplace. And let's be honest, you do it anyways. When you really don't want to buy her something, but you do it anyways to make her happy. And guys that are truly generous want to do it 
and they don't expect anything. In, well, let's put it another way. They might even think they're going to get something in return, but they're okay if they don't. They can surrender it. They're like, hey, you know, I bought her a dinner. Didn't work out. I'm moving on. And if you can't do that, if you can't do that, then why the hell are you buying her a dinner? Don't buy her a dinner. You know, wait until you can. You know, there are a lot of guys out there that are utter assholes. And they actually do better with women than the nice guys. They say no all the time. They set boundaries. They tell women, women says, I want to get uh, Chinese tonight. And he's like, no, we're getting Italian. And why would a woman pick that guy over the nice guy? Because that guy is honest. He really tells her what she needs to hear. And if he, he typically is also not afraid of sex. So if he wants to get laid and he thinks she's hot, he'll tell her that too, because he's not afraid of the tension. He'll look at her and go, you know, you're so effing hot. Look at you. Oh my God, I just want to bend you over that table. And she feels he means it. Whereas a nice guy is like, well, you know, I don't want to get too close yet. I'm going to take my time. And then he's bitter when she doesn't kiss him. And he didn't escalate or move the energy forward at all. He didn't shift anything. So what are you? I want to ask you that question. What are you? Are you a nice guy? Really take a hard look. Take a hard look at yourself and ask yourself, am I a nice guy? And if you are a nice guy, what do you do about it? Well, one of the most important things you can do about it is first acknowledge that you're a nice guy. You have all these nice guy tendencies. You know, you, you, uh, you do all this stuff and you got to admit it to yourself because it's really hard to admit to yourself. To, a lot of people have a hard time admitting it to themselves. And then you need to look underneath the nice guy a little bit. What's underneath the nice guy? What's underneath the nice, nice guy is typically a sense of dislike for yourself. Shame is what we call that. I don't like myself. So I got to pretend to be something else so that I can get what I want. Because if I'm truly who I want, I ask for what I want, I set boundaries, nobody's going to respect me, nobody's going to like me, nobody's going to want to be around me. But if I do all these things for people, then I can get them to like me. That's the nice guy. And if you could admit that you're a nice guy, you can start to change it. Beneath the toxic shame that makes up the nice guy is what? Is abandonment. Typically, a nice guy feels abandoned, emotionally abandoned by his family, by somebody in his family, and possibly multiple people in his family. I mean, let's take a look at that a little deeper, because that's really interesting, too. And I'm not talking about a literal abandonment. Let me back up again a little bit. I'm not talking about a literal abandonment, but this emotional abandonment. Because the nice guy has this sense that, that the parent uh, punished by abandoning. So what they do is the parent is when they punish you as a child, they pull their emotions away and they withhold love. It might be for 24 hours. And for a little child, that's huge. They feel abandoned emotionally. See, really good parenting, you don't pull your love away. You're stern, you're strong. You teach the child, you show the child, you discipline, but they still know you love them. With, a, with an abandoned child, the parent has a sense of, I'm gonna shut off all my heart from you. I'm gonna shut off and pull back my heart, pull back my emotions, and I'm not gonna love you anymore. And for like a day. And then I'll come back and start loving you again. And I use that as a weapon. And that's a really effed up thing to do, to use something like that as a weapon on a child because it really messes a child up. Now imagine that's done many times throughout the child's life. So many times we can't even count over and over and over. The child starts to become numb, but also starts to think they're not lovable because they're not lovable by their own family. And this starts to compound through their life. Sometimes parents do it in different ways. Sometimes they're doing it consciously and it's their parenting style. Sometimes they're bipolar, they're alcoholics, and they're just pulling their love away when they're in alcoholic rage and they go shut themselves in their room for a day or they're doing drugs or they're bipolar. And, and there's a sense of lack of staying open-hearted and connected to their children, nurturing their children. And that again creates this sense, I'm not good enough because a child just doesn't know any better. So if this is you, this really needs to be healed and it has to be healed by facing the very thing you're afraid of, by going out and setting boundaries, by saying no, by breaking up with a girl you don't want to be with, because that terrifies a nice guy. It feels like ripping your arm off. By ending relationships, ending dates, ending date early, learning to say things that might, you might think piss people off, but actually will probably cause them to respect you more. By, uh, by doing all these things, it's really, really powerful. So what do you want out of life? Do you want to be a nice guy? Or do you want to be a confident guy? I'm not talking about an asshole. 
Because that's the opposite of nice guy's asshole. And I'm talking about a confident, solid guy. See, a solid guy, when he's nice, he's nice because he wants to be, not because he has to be. Not, he's not nice by default. He's just like, you know what, I want to be nice to you. And they feel the difference. And then there's that sense of, I don't want to be nice to you. I'm not going to do it. Why would I do that? You know, I'm, yeah, because you're being rude right now. That's why I'm not being nice to you. I'm going to be stern with you. I'm going to be solid. I'm going to set a boundary. I'm going to say, no, if we need to break up, I'm going to break up. And a woman can trust that so much more. So again, what I want you to do for this video is I want you to go through your life. And I want you to list out all the places that you're being too damn nice. Make an honest list. Go inside, make a list. And just go scan your, the last few days, week, and just say, where am I not setting boundaries? Where am I not saying no? Where am I avoiding tension? These are great questions to ask yourself. And just start to compile a list of all of this. Um, where am I too giving? Giving to a fault. Like, I really didn't want to do that, but I did it. You know, who do, do I ever stay on the phone too long and sit and listen to somebody ramble when I just really want to get off? You know? Do I ever go on dates that I really don't want to go on just because I don't know how to say no or I don't end the date early and I spend way too long with the person? Do I spend too much money on somebody even when I know I'm not attracted to them? Uh, if a friend asks me to go help him with something and I really don't want to do it, do I just say yes because I have to, not because I want to, not because I'm choosing to say, you know what, I really want to help this person. Do you let women walk all over? Do you have women friends that when they call you, you jump and run? Do you have women friends you need to end the relationship with because all they do is take advantage of you because you have this codependent nice guy relationship and you just haven't ended it? Are you in a relationship you know you should end and you're just not being honest with yourself and when you go to end it, it feels like you're ripping your arm off. And when you look at all this stuff, take a look, write it all down, get really clear. When you take a deep look at all this stuff, ask yourself, ask yourself the honest question. What on this list can I, you know, can I start doing today to start to build my own confidence? Maybe you, there's a place in there you haven't set a boundary. Can you go out today and set that boundary? Maybe there's a place on there where you got a friend that's been taking advantage of you. Maybe you need to tell that friend goodbye. And what I would do is, is take, take, imagine that there's a scale of one to 10. And one on the scale is a low amount of tension. 10 is a max amount of tension. Start picking the things that are ones, twos, and threes and start setting your boundaries today. And, and feel the pain and the emotions and the sadness that comes up. And just start letting it go a little bit of time. Do it, feel it, welcome it, be with it. Can I welcome that pain? Can I welcome that sadness? You know, of letting this person that I don't even like out of my life, of saying no to this person, of setting this boundary. Maybe it's, I, I don't have time Saturday night to help you with that. I'm gonna, we'll do it Sunday if you still wanna do it. And when you go to do these things, notice deep down inside how you feel. Do you feel good about yourself? Do you feel bad about yourself? Does it hurt in the moment, but the next day you feel more powerful? And I want you to keep going through that list a little bit at a time, learning about you. What do you really want? Now, some of this stuff you may find you know, you have to adjust. You start to set a boundary and you realize, I don't, want, I don't need to set a full boundary. I can do a partial boundary here. So I don't need to kick these people out of my life because sometimes people go to the other extreme. They become real big dicks to compensate for being the nice guy. And that's not right either. So as you go through this list, be open to that. Realize what you're learning, what's going on. Learn to open your heart more and just learn to flow with it, you know? Learn to uh, have an open heart while you're setting the boundaries. That's the real key is, and this was a hard one for me to figure out, is I had to learn to keep my heart open and set the boundaries with an open heart, not a closed heart. I didn't want to set the boundaries out of anger. I wanted to set the boundaries out of love. Still set them, still be stern with them, still be powerful with them, but set them out of love. And from there, this will lead into this idea of radical honesty. Because as you get more confident with tension, setting boundaries, saying no, breaking your nice guy, even being a dick when you need to be, when it makes sense. Like I have to be kind of an asshole here to get this done. Then the next step is you start welcoming the sense that, you know what? I can be loving when I choose to be. I can be powerfully loving when I choose. I can open my heart to people because I'm not afraid of saying no anymore. And that's powerful. 
And the next step will be this radical honesty in the moment. Going to this place where when you talk to people, you don't hold back anymore. You tell them the truth. You tell them what you feel. You tell them what's going on for you. You tell them what you're experiencing. And, you know, when you're mad, you tell them you're mad. When you're sad, you tell them you're sad. And when you're flirting with a girl and you want to know where she's at, you just ask her, hey, you know, I've noticed you haven't been as chatty lately. What's going on? I, I, I want to know. You know, I believe, and you could say that, I believe in being really honest. I believe in radical honesty, actually. And this is what I'm feeling right now. I like you. I want to get to know you better. If you don't feel the same way, that's okay. I can handle it, but I don't want to be strung along. Tell me what's up. Let's get to the root of this right now, not later. And there's a power in that, isn't there? Now, the first time you do that, you may be that bold or you may not be. It doesn't matter. The idea is I'm willing and okay with losing girls to build my confidence and self-esteem. Matter of fact, I want to let some girls go and say goodbye to them because it feels good. It says, wow, I don't need her to validate me to feel good about myself. And then you become that much more attractive for the next girl. So as you break the nice guy and you start developing the sense of radical honesty, you become more powerful, more powerful as a man, more powerful as a leader and sexier to women. Okay. Now, Breaking the nice guy, I'm going to say this is the last thing I'm going to say for this video, is really an embodiment issue. We talk about this in every video. You got to learn to feel your heart. You got to learn to feel your stomach. You got to learn to feel your whole body when you do it. We talk a lot about that. No isn't up here. No, because women will challenge that. It's here. No, we're not doing it. I'm not doing it. It's grounding. It's nope. You can try, you can try, you can try all you want, but it's not going to happen. I'm not going to do it. This is my boundary. She'll feel it. She'll feel it when it comes from a solid place inside yourself. So I want to invite you into breaking the nice guy. And I'd like to have deeper maybe discussions about this and help you guys get through the nice guy. And what I want you to do is put comments in here. Does this video help you? This is just a little one that I wanted to do off the cuff about some nice guy principles. If you really love it and you really like this video and you like the principles I laid out in here, they're simple. I'll go deeper into this. Maybe we'll do a little, a little talk on the nice guy and breaking the nice guy at some point. We'll see. I can't guarantee that. But if you guys are interested enough, I've noticed that a lot of you guys really watch the videos on nice guys. Um, then this could be something we do. The next thing I want to talk about is is, is, and I might get into this in the next video, is Radical Honesty, Blanton's work, um, and from the book Radical Honesty, and then particularly the chapter on anger, really letting your anger out, and being really honest with people. It's a powerful chapter. And um, I think you could radically shift your life just by implementing that. And to me, that those principles are nice guy breaking principles. You can break the nice guy with that. So I'm just gonna leave it at that for now. Hopefully you like this video. And with that said, I'd love to have you like, uh, like the video if you did. Subscribe, share the video with anybody you think could use this. Comment in the video, I'd love to see your comments. And remember, only the confident really live. And I'm gonna see you in the next video. Take care, have a beautiful day.